Hi, I'm Sean Clark. Today I'm standing in front of Anthony Fremont's house from Twilight Zone the movie. Welcome to Horror's Hollow Grounds. Hey, you want to see something really scary? Scary. Are you ready? Okay, go ahead. What are you doing? Right now we're in front of the building that was used as the nursing home in Steven Spielberg's uh, portion of Twilight Zone, the movie, the kick the can episode. Right here, this is the first nursing home he goes to and he teaches them about how to be young again. The interior of the house was a set built at Warner Brothers Studios. There is, however, one shot that is shot inside the real house. That one right there where you can see out the window and see the building across the street. That building is still there today, but it's harder to see because of the bushes that are now in front of it. You can pretty much only see the top of the house. And we will see that in just a second. Right there. See the house peeking out from behind the bushes. They use the staircase quite a bit in this portion of the film. This is where they go up and down to sneak out and play kick the can. The yard itself pretty much looks the same as well as the house next door. There's just a lot of growth in between the two properties now, so it's not as visible. And that back structure I don't believe was there at the time of filming. I'm not sure if the house was ever really a nursing home, but today it's a rehabilitation center. Now when Scatman leaves the house, he actually goes in the wrong direction if you're walking to our next location. You would have wanted to take a left instead of a right, and then go around the corner. See, now he's walking back towards the other house, and then turns here on Church Street. So this house is actually right behind the other house on the street behind it. 
so they're like a block from each other, both off of Center Street. This one is on Church Street, and the other house is on Main Street, Piru, California. Now go on to the next segment of It's a Good Life, directed by Joe Dante. This starts at the Halfway House in Santa Clarita, California. Now if that redhead looks familiar to you, that's a grown-up Anthony Fremont from the original episode of It's a Good Life. Actor Billy Mummy actually starred in three classic Twilight Zone episodes and then reprised his role of Anthony Fremont in the 2002 Twilight Zone reboot and sequel It's Still a Good Life, with Cloris Leachman returning and his daughter playing the evil kid this time, his real-life daughter. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that episode. It's really good. So right here we're at the halfway house, the diner where Anthony discovers Helen. And he pulls a little trick on her, making her think that she ran him over. She backed out, hit him on the bicycle. That would have been over here. And then she felt so bad, she decided to give him a ride home. Well, that proved to be a mistake. We're gonna head over to that house right now. We're now in Granada Hills, California. This was completely undeveloped. See this road they're driving on? It's that orange line I drew. Oda went right through those houses. There was nothing out there except this house. See right there? Would have gone right through that house. And drive right up here, which I would have sworn was a set. And there it is, Anthony Fremont's house. This is a trip because that house totally looked like a set built in the middle of nowhere. But it was a house built in the middle of nowhere. This whole area was nothing. It was all just hillsides. And now it's all completely developed. And that house, sitting right in the middle of all of it. Now I started to think to myself, well maybe they moved the house. But then I saw these hills in the background, and if you look at those hills right there, there they are. It is exactly where it always was. You have to go to the street on the corner to be able to see those hills, but if I pan over here, boom, there's the house right there. So, it's in the same spot it's always been. They just built around it. It really is a beautiful house. I mean, it looks so unique. Almost cartoony Victorian with those colorful stained glass windows. Now we're going to take a look inside. Now this is a set. The real house looks a little different, but kind of similar. You'll see here, this is the real room with the door closed heading to the front door. And then here where the fireplace is, you see it's similar, but different. Well here's the big dead giveaway, the staircase because in reality, the staircase is on the other side of the room. This was all built and shot at Warner Brothers Studios, right at the end of the street where the ambulance is driving down at the end of the film. Also shot at Warner Brothers Studios were all the interiors of the airplane for George Miller's segment Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, which I believe is superior than the original. I think John Lithgow knocked it out of the park, taking over for William Shatner. And you have to admit, the creature in this one looked a lot better. Now when they land, you do see an airport. You can't really make out any of the buildings. They're in the background, out of focus. But I was told this was Van Nuys Airport. And uh, I happened to be in the area, so I grabbed a couple shots, even though you can't recognize anything. Nothing looks the same. This is the location where the ambulance is driving by. And you can see the motel that they pass. That's right there. Well, that was right there. This was the corner of Lima and Olive Avenue. There was a street sign here. This has completely been redeveloped. Totally different now. 
can't recognize anything, but have old pictures and whatnot to show us where it was, but it was this road. See, there's a Morton Steakhouse here. This is where the motel would have stood, right here. So if you see right here, the ambulance is heading north on West Olive. And then if you look out the window there, you can see Dan Aykroyd's passing those signs again in the opposite direction, heading south on West Olive. And then when this cuts here, it's again heading north on West Olive, looking away from the motel. We're now heading to Sherman Oaks, California for our final segment, the John Landis directed Time Out. Now this one obviously has a lot of tragedy surrounding it, and we'll get to that. But we're starting here at the Tender Trap, which today is Carlito's Way Cocktail Lounge in beautiful Sherman Oaks, California. That Lido Pizza Place, still there and still tasty. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get inside the bar because of COVID and the lockdown and everything. But I did get some pictures from the inside so I can show you what it kind of looks like today. The layout's pretty much the same, as you can see there. Still has the same wood paneling walls. And the entrance is still in the same spot. The fireplace and fire pit have been changed. See, there's a fire pit there, and now there's an actual proper fireplace with rock work. Still has a TV up there in the corner. Pretty much it's the same. So if you want a drink, stop by and check out Carlito's Way. See, the rocks are still the same. Look at that. Exactly the same. And now we're transported to Universal Studios. Not Warner Brothers, but Universal. This is the European Street at the back lot. Now the spot where he's standing, see that X? That's right where he's standing. That building's been torn down. But the building straight across from him, you can still recognize. Now look here, when they get out of the Jeep, you'll see a building in the background with an archway. Right there. See that little archway? You'll see the tram past the archway right there. And see that light post? That's about where he was standing. Here's an overhead shot of the European Street back lot. And now we get to the tragic part of the story. Indian Dunes, which was a racetrack sometimes used for filming right behind Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. This area was used for the KKK sequence as well as the Vietnam sequence. They built this little dock on the same lake where they shot the Vietnam sequence. So he is in the same water right now where the accident happened. They just set dressed it later. Now he pops up in the jungle of Vietnam. It's in the distance there where the accident happened. This is about as close as most people get to it. But today, we're going to go to the exact spot where the tragedy happened. This is going to be quite the hike. Ways to go. Probably about a mile. I think it's right below that ridge up there. Oh, the dry little river slash stream bed. Actually, there is water in it at one point here. This is where they had built a little dam and they closed off the, the water flow to, to make the, what looked like the lake in the film. Now we gotta fight through some of this brush to get to the spot. One thing that's going to be tough is to show the hills up here, which is the real thing that you'd match it up. Big problem is the sun being right there is going to shadow everything. It's going to be difficult to get through, but we're going to try. This 
So you're saying you see something through this way? Yeah. This is serious right here. This is like fucking jungle style. I just don't want to get lost heading back. Uh, let's see. Actually, these things are kind of easier to push through. Okay. I mean, and they're, they don't have anything sticky on them. I know. You good getting through there? <laughs> The, the inflatable thing. Oh, I hate those. Ugh. Okay. Oh, shit. Ooh, I just hit a spider web. Ugh. Should we go this way or that way? Um, huh? Uh, straight this way. It's like right around this. I'm trying to block the sun, so you hear that hawk? Yeah, so cool. So this is how close we are to it. We're almost there. Uh, so wouldn't it be this way? There is something over there. All right, let's get there. I mean, it looks like another opening of some sort. But how do we get there? Climbing through this. Through what? Through this right here? Yep. Uh, if we go this way. Uh, either way, it's a nightmare. Oh, yeah. Well... When it crashed, it was in the middle of a, a big lake. And uh, so this is probably all new growth since then. There's an incredible amount of bamboo growing wild everywhere. And I'm assuming this is because they use this area for so many productions to simulate Vietnam. If you watch the movie The Exterminator, the opening scene is eerily like the Twilight Zone scene, with helicopters flying low over explosions. In fact, it looked more dangerous in The Exterminator than in Twilight Zone the movie, but it's exactly the same area. If you get the chance, check it out. Woo. Almost ate shit. I really think this is the spot. This is it. Yeah, this would be it. Well, <clears throat> we just fought through all those bushes and stuff. I felt like, you know, with those explorers, like I needed a machete to be cutting through well anyway this is the spot this is the exact spot it's been documented by other youtubers that were using google earth and everything and crime scene photos and footage from tv stations from the crash site and matching it up with the hills up here which is kind of hard to see right now because the sun is silhouetting them but this is the exact spot where the helicopter went down right in this area here um this was, this took some doing, this took some doing to get to, and uh, it's a trip. When I was a kid, I used to race motorcycles here in what was once called Indian Dunes Raceway. I haven't been back here since probably 1983. This whole entire area was different racetracks and all this area back here was just random open where you could just ride and, you know, do whatever. But, 
One thing that's kind of interesting is, you know, they used to shoot a lot of movies and TV shows out here. But one day I was riding out here by myself while my dad was racing on one of the tracks. And I was riding around and I came across this fenced off area that was camouflaged. And I stopped and I took a look at it. And inside this fenced off area were all these smashed cars. And the ones that caught my eye, there was about five smashed General Lees from the Dukes of Hazard. And as like a 12 year old kid, I was losing my shit. Oh my God, General Lee. And then there was a bunch of army vehicles. I think combat and mash shot out here too. So there was all these smashed vehicles and unsmashed vehicles and they were all being stored in a big pen. I wish I had a camera back then. I would have loved to documented that. But you know, when you're a kid, you don't know. You don't know what you're never gonna see again. I didn't know I wasn't ever gonna be back out here till I was 50 years old. But, you know, this is the spot where uh, Vic Morrow's final, final stand, him and those two kids, you know, it's a, it was a tragic accident. I really would have loved to have seen what that segment of the film would have been like had he lived and they were able to properly finish it instead of having to edit around the obvious uh, accident. It's kind of eerie kind of eerie being out here in the middle of nowhere. What I would be wondering is if there's anything left over from the film sets. If there's, you know, anything. Well, yeah, but like, I don't know how often people come through here. See that tree up at the top of the hill? Is there any sort of openings through there? Decided to venture in further. And now we're in this area. This looks like, look at this. This is creepy as hell. It's like, almost looks like a hut, but we found some more open space we're gonna try to get through. Oh, I don't like that. <sighs> yeah, I hear the water. I'd like to get to the actual water. And now we can see the hillside because the sun's behind it. So I'd like to get some shots of that. It's a good thing I talked you into coming through here. <laughs> My little adventurer pushed me, pushed me to go further. That scared me. Did you hear that? I thought you were next to me because I heard movement right there. You see it? Oh shit, it is. Sweetness. Alright. Fuck. Wow. This is cool. Got to make sure that this isn't like standing on top of water and we fall in, you know what I'm saying? Is this, god damn it. All right, I wouldn't go much further than this. Wow, how cool is this? And as you can see, check it out. We're right here. This is definitely it. A thousand percent. I think we were, where I was talking earlier, was definitely the spot where the accident happened. But they had filled it up with water so this whole area was flooded to make it look like one giant lake. But, uh, yeah, here it is. If I had some waders, I'd go across and see if I can find a 
any uh, pieces of uh, Vietnamese hut over there, but uh, that ain't happening. This is this is this is as far as we're gonna be able to go. Oh yeah. Oh, see that that is water under there. Okay. Don't want to step too much further. I mean, at least the water's not deep. Oh, it's not, but I don't want to get face planted and my shoes full of mud for the hike back through a lot of sand, which was also unexpected and unexpected. I guess it was called Indian Dunes back in the day, so it's a sand dune technically. But this is this is kind of tranquil, you know. Wow. Made it. Now we gotta fight through all this shit and figure our way back. As you can see. See the line, the ridge line there. Man. Crazy. Made it. Victory. Got crap in my hair. But victory, that crap all over me. Yes, look like I just was standing next to a wood chipper. But we made it. See the ridge line behind me. Definitely something I would do with a friend. I wouldn't come out here by myself because if something happened to you out here, ain't nobody ever gonna find you. No, sir. All right, well, getting back through all this was not as easy. We kind of got lost a little bit. Uh, as you can see, had a little, a few scrapes and scratches on the old legs. <sighs> Woo! Nasty. So we made it back to the, the dry riverbed. Now we got to follow it back about a mile to get back to where we're parked. I'm covered in crap and bugs are all jumping on me. My legs are all scraped up like crazy. I'm bleeding, uh, but you know what? It was worth it. It was worth it. Mission accomplished. It's all about accomplishing it. Hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, make sure to like and subscribe and all that stuff. I mean, you know, I drew blood for you on this one. Come on now.